Marina Tucci from Amnesty International Italy cannot be here with us tonight, so we will have her um, um, speak to us um, via a wonderful technical device called, I guess, Skype. <laughs> And, um, and we will make her share her talk and her insights um, on the project that um, the Italian branch of um, Amnesty International is running. It's called Barometro dell'Odio, the Hate Barometer Project. And um, Amnesty Italy has been mobilizing activists and monitoring online hate speech um, for two years now and, and its related phenomena. And, um, they were also they were also part or took part in the Data for Good project. Good evening, Martina. Hi. Good to have you with us. Um, basically, the floor is yours. We, we would love to hear more from the project that um, Amnesty International Italy is is um, running and what it has to do with Data for Good. Okay. So thank you, and first of all, I'm sorry for not being there. I was supposed to join you today, but my work had me here, so I try to, to share with you everything we did for and uh, what I'm going to present to you is one of the many opportunities we have to combine data science and activism. At the same time, uh, it didn't, didn't offer us 
uh, solid data. So we didn't have data we, we could use uh, with institutions and stakeholders. Um, we we <laughs> we met uh, Rani, and uh, she she talked about, she talked about uh, her uh, her algorithms uh, tools she already developed through a group of journalists and that was the time that that really was. A great opportunity for Amnesty International to improve our monitoring system. We made a short pilot project to test the tools, and then we arrived to the second social media monitoring for the European elections in 2018, last May. Uh, it took six weeks. So six weeks of social media monitoring, around 180 activists were involved, um, for a total of 2,000 of hours of engagement, which is really a lot. Uh, we did offer to them some tools, a sort of tool to get ready for this activity. So uh, we, we did a couple of workshops involving activists directly with experts. Uh, Rania also took part in these workshops and we also um, wrote a guide, so uh, a, a very short booklet to help them in understanding the criteria we were applying. And uh, we did monitor a selection of, uh, of candidates, uh, again both on Facebook and Twitter and also the comments of general users. In order to reveal the, um, the cause-effect relationship between the phone and the messages spread by politicians and the reactions and the sentiments of people, of common people. Uh, again, it was very interesting. Uh, uh, the results told us that more than one over ten contents were offensive or discriminatory or hate speech. Uh, we also uh, did re reveal that human rights represent the only very marginal part in the political debate, at least uh, the online political debate. And the most present topic uh, was migration, followed by the, the solidarity world, NGOs in particular, and NGOs which uh, run SAR missions in the Mediterranean Sea and religious minorities. So uh, uh, the, the topics, the main topics, were all linked to, to the migration issue, mm. and also. Uh, we also uh, did demonstrate that politicians post and tweet about polarizing topics such as migration and religious minorities did generate a bigger percentage of uh, hate speech and offensive contents in general. Uh, it wasn't a real surprise, but at the same time, for the first time, we had data to show it. We did use this data uh, with the institutions, asking for a real change, asking for uh, for laws, for legal systems which can help the victims of a speech, and at the same time, uh, laws which can prevent this phenomenon. Uh, we also uh, revealed that offensive uh, posts and tweets by politicians generate bigger percentage of offensive and hate speech comments among uh, users. And again, uh, this was a partial, a partial demonstration of this strong connection link between messages spread by politicians and general users, so uh, demonstration of the influence of, of, um, 
of communications, of the communication strategies of Italian candidates. Uh, and it was very interesting also to explore uh, a tool offered by Facebook, uh, which is a sort of library in which you can dis discover how public page um, did invest money, on which uh, posts and messages they decided to invest. And we did discover that many Italian politicians did choose to invest on offensive contents regarding migrants, uh, minorities in general. So again, uh, communication strategies are, are a part of, uh, of a machine, a real machine. It's not just, I mean, the single politician who decides to use social, his social media channel this way. Uh, it's a communication strategy which, which is shared by a big part of politicians in Italy at the moment. And it has a very strong impact on the media agenda, social media agenda, and uh, on the political debate in general. Uh, we also discovered that topics with a high percentage of um, politicians' offensive posts and tweets uh, were able to collect more likes, share, and replies. So it's easy to understand why this hate strategy <laughs> is so uh, rooted among our politicians. Uh, we also discovered that hate, hate against women was quite peculiar, uh, and that's because uh, differently from the other uh, targets and topics, women and uh, women rights. Uh, are always very uh, polemic. I mean, uh, women are a regular target of haters, and women's rights also can generate many, uh, uh, many negative discussions, a very negative debate, and different uh, from the other cases because, uh, I mean, we don't need, in this case, politicians who speak negatively about women or about women's rights. It's something which is rooted among general users, even without the, the support, let's call it support, of politicians. Uh, we didn't include in this graph uh, LGBT rights or the LGBTI community as a target. Uh, and that's because uh, we found uh, only a few comments regarding this target or this topic. So it wasn't relevant, the statistical point of view, and we decided to exclude it. Of course, it doesn't mean that uh, the, uh, the LGBTI community is not affected by hate speech. On the contrary, uh, it's, uh, they are attacked on a regular basis, but at the same time, this uh, monitoring wasn't able to demonstrate it. Uh, we will try to do it again, and the focus of our next monitoring uh, is uh, women and LGBTI pay. So we'll try to, to discover what we weren't able to discover the first time. Uh, and last thing, again, uh, our main targets were Muslim. We discovered that the main time targets of haters uh, during these uh, European election campaigns were Muslim people, migrants and refugees, and we, again. Uh, also, it is very different in politicians or users. Uh, general users can be very explicit, while um, politicians uh, are a bit smarter, so they use different techniques. 
They also have very often staff <coughs> in charge of media management. So they did use strategies which are different and which don't involve uh, explicit hate, simply to avoid problems. But uh, <laughs> we, can, uh, we can clearly say that uh, politicians create uh, a fertile ground for raiders free speech. And uh, one of their techniques is to ask to the people, to their followers, to express their opinion about the controversial, controversial news involving minorities. For this. Uh, just to, to finish a few more words, um, what to say? I already told you about the investment in it, uh, about the divisive topics which generate more interactions. Um, of course, this is at the base of politicians' strategy. Um, we also uh, try to talk with some politicians, understand how they manage uh, hate speech, because they are not just uh, the people who provoke users. They can also be victims of a hate speech, especially women in politics. And they it told that that one of the main problems with haters is that uh, politicians just ignore them. They don't reply. While when the victims, in this case uh, women in politics, replies, uh, the situation changes a bit. The invaders uh, start uh, attack them less and less day by day. And at the same time, a strong community of supporters of the victim of hate uh, start uh, uh, moderating the debate. And this happens independently from the, from the social media uh, management. By the, politi by the politician staff. So it's interesting to, to understand also how politicians try to defend themselves from the case. Because, of course, this technique uh, can indicate uh, a response. One of the possible response we can try to study in order to, to, to develop and implement uh, a more effective programs and projects to, to tackle hate speech on. And I think that's all for now, because I only have like 10 minutes. <laughs> but if you have questions, I'm here. And Rania is going to, to tell you a bit more regarding the methodology, which is also an important element of, the, of these uh, social media monitoring. Thank you very much, Martin.